Hey guys, Jeremy from TACMED Australia. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and show you the setter press bandage. With the weather warming up, snakes are becoming more and more active, and it's really important, especially where we are in Australia, with all the animals trying to kill us, our snakes being no exception. So the setter press bandage is what we use for the pressure immobilisation technique. Now I'm not going to talk about the signs and symptoms of snake bite, I'm just going to go straight into showing you the bandage and why we prefer it. So it's 10 centimetres wide and three and a half meters three and a half meters long unstretched now the good thing about the set of press bandage is that on the inside of it we have some rectangles brown rectangles now when we apply that we stretch it out so it becomes a square now with that we know we've got an even pressure going all the way up the limb with the brown side we're getting about 35 milligrams of mercury pressure which is what we need to slow down the lymphatic system that's the system that the, uh, the venom travels through the body. Now, if we can slow or stop that venom, hopefully it's going to break down and, uh, and not cause harm to the patient. So watch now, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration on how we apply it. We're going to use Ben here as our demonstration dummy for the pressure immobilisation technique. So again, like I said, we're going to use the brown squares on the inside of the bandage. This will also make it easy as we unravel the, uh, the bandage, it just comes off nice and smooth. So I'll probably do a blog post on where we start and which way we go up and down the limb, but there's not a lot of studies to prove any of the techniques or which way is better. So we're gonna say Ben's been struck on the arm, so I'm gonna start on the area it's bitten. If we've got a pen, we'll mark it there. So I'm gonna do a couple of wraps. Now I'm going to start going down the limb and I want to make sure that I go over each, each wine by about 50% of the bandage. Now I'm going to go all the way to the fingertips and I'm going to start going back up the limb. Again, I'm going to make those rectangles into a square. By going over each wrap by 50% and making the rectangle into a square, we know we're going to get even compression throughout the whole bandage. We're going to go up as high as we can on the limb. And there we go. So we're going to secure that the, the best way we can, but I'm just going to tuck it in right now. So we see Ben's six foot three. I was able to do his whole um, whole arm by starting at a bite site and going all the way down and back up the limb. Now where the squares really pay off is obviously if you've been bitten or seen, seen someone bitten by a snake, you're going to have adrenaline pumping through the system. And we don't want this to be a tourniquet and we don't want it to be too tight. We need to be able to get put our finger easily up through the bandage that it's not too tight. By having the squares, it's going to be an even pressure throughout the whole bandage and we're not going to cut off circulation. We should be able to do a good capillary refill there with Ben and it's well less than two seconds, but we're going to get a nice secure bandage. So that's the pressure immobilization technique with the set of press bandage. Thanks for watching.